hi ajinta ji thank you so much for joining my podcast and you know it is amazing opportunity to have you on my podcast uh, good afternoon nikita in fact i should be thanking you immensely for this opportunity and just for your information today is vishwakarma puja you know it's a huge thing and lord vishwakarma is basically you know the creator the architect of almost everything in this universe and that is believed and i being a bombayite uh, of course we know that you know there are other deities including uh, ganpati bappa morya in fact we are having ganesh chaturthi tomorrow but vishwakarma puja is happening here in calcutta you know and it's a huge thing so i think we are doing this at last on a very auspicious day nikita thank you thank you so much superb and seriously i have known you over so many years now you know it's been such a though we had you know surprising start but uh, our journey continued throughout so many years and uh, i have known you and uh, you know i have heard so many stories from you about consumer insight i have learned so much from you uh i can go on and on about your introduction related to you know how you uh, tackle insight but literally i would love to have a formal introduction from you who is ajanta roy sure thank you thank you so much for that in fact nikita i remember vividly you know i just bumped into you through somebody during the covid days and it was 2020 if i remember right and uh, like you know i've always been very busy working 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 and during that particular period suddenly everything came to a standstill my job basically you know was traveling interacting visiting people talking to them but then at that point of time because of the restrictions everything came to a standstill and that's how i found you i discovered you so it was really nice knowing learning a lot from you coming back to your question well uh, i basically work as a consumer insights practitioner which you might be knowing but yes it's not just you but people have been really asking about what exactly i do because you know i think uh, very few people exactly know what this is all about i'll tell you see i started off in bombay in different areas i was into uh, business development marketing i was into sales you know i like running after the targets i was into public relations and after we moved down to calcutta i was into public relations and i have worked as a full timer you know in all these areas and suddenly somebody came up you know with this idea of talking to people interacting with them and just you know trying to understand them more and getting insights so insights is the main thing that uh, is important for anything like you know it's feedback and then it's understanding people and then ultimately you know we curate insights so consumer insights practitioner i basically work as a consumer insights practitioner now you would have definitely heard about market research nikita right now market research you know is two kinds one is quantitative research wherein nikita you would get to know the number of people who know you nikita so this is some idea that you get about the numbers you know maybe in pune maybe in kolkata maybe in los angeles or wherever and i work as a qualitative market research consultant which tells you nikita why are so many people connecting with you is it because you are pretty is it because you are young is it because you are knowledgeable is it because you are one of those individuals who had started working on your own long 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 time back so this is what qualitative research is so my job talks about knowing the insights after interacting with people of different age groups male female it could be a business woman it could be a retired person a senior citizen and then slowly and gradually culling out the insights you know which helps any business uh ajita ma'am i understand that you know insights are the most crucial part for any business owners right but uh that is somehow there is a myth that it is related to a product like if i want to launch a product then it's of course it's important it, how is my product doing what is the public reaction reaction to it etc so i understand the importance in terms of product company but would you also shed some light is it necessary for a service based and uh, you know service based business 
to actually look out for more insights. Okay, okay. Nikita, I really appreciate this question of yours. In fact, uh, it's very natural. It's very obvious, you know, that a company having a product or wanting to launch a product would want to know more about its market, its potential uh, audience, etc., etc. But surprisingly, qualitative market research can be extended to any product or service. I'll give you a very quick example. Okay, I am the ex-public relations officer of Peerless Hospital and Vikera Research Center in Calcutta. And I was there for almost 10 years and the other branches as well. Now there I had executed research being on the other side of the table. What happened was it was a new hospital. Okay. And we had patients coming in from Bangladesh, coming in from different sectors for different ailments and all that. This would have been some 20, 25 years ago. Right. Now the hospital being a new hospital, it was formed by a typical Bengali conglomerate in Calcutta and they wanted to understand the feedback of patients after the patients are admitted after a surgery has happened and after they have gone home or maybe you know after somebody has come for a outpatient treatment and gone home. so as the public relations officer what the job was the marketing job was to really understand whether the hospital is doing well Nikita there's competition everywhere there are many Nikitas there are many Ajantas but Nikita Vora has a differentiator. Ajanta Roy has a differentiator. So qualitative research in a service industry helps you. How? We actually went to the houses of these patients who had open heart surgery, who had a knee replacement, who had other ailments. We went and we spoke to them and we found out about what did they feel. Feelings are emotions very close to the heart. Were they treated properly? Did the doctor speak properly and did they have to wait? What was the tone in which they were interacted? What exactly were the loopholes and how could it be made better? So we got these nuances and we actually made a report and submitted it to the management. Subsequent to this, there was a training of the receptionists, you know, in the hospital. Even the doctors were told, you know, to take care of the patients in a different manner much different than the other hospitals because when somebody goes to a hospital you know we are anyway in a different mental state right so this was just an example coming back to your question yes nikita qualitative market research can be extended to services as well for example you are actually giving a service right you are not selling a product you are teaching people you are making them understand what digital marketing is right so again if you really want to know the areas of improvement if you really want to know what are your differentiators, why are people coming to Nikita Vora and not going to some Nikita Deshmukh, qualitative research would actually come and help you, giving you the finer nuances because there are a lot of techniques which are utilized, you know. So it extends to both products and any kind of services. That's wonderful. Lajanta Ji, I'm going to take you up on that. Uh, my next question is, you know, like you just said, um, before 25 years, you were in, uh, working in a hospital, you worked on this project. But what inspired you to get in this field, right? I have not known many Ajantas or uh, many people who are into this consumer insights, right? They are not practicing it. Maybe we are today Googling it or, you know, taking uh, information from here and there. Uh, by even talking to our first year friends and family and getting a feedback. But that is very common, right? What inspired you to take this up on a professional level? Okay, this is a very interesting story and thank you so much for asking me this, Nikita. Nikita, being a Bombayite, I had worked in different areas as a full-timer. Okay, it was always a 9 to 5 kind of a job, whether it was business development, customer relations, marketing, PR, whatever. In Calcutta also, when we shifted base, it was like that. Now, I had some friends and I had been to somebody's office, you know. Now, there was somebody who was not there for a particular project. And uh, this particular person was not there for an emergency, was supposed to be interacting with a set of consumers. And I was just literally pushed in, you know, to take the assignment, just manage it. I didn't know what was happening, but my previous experience helped me a lot because I knew market research from the other side of the table. It was not that, you know, I didn't know anything and suddenly I got into qualitative research. So I had to moderate a session. What you are doing is you are moderating this. 
and I had to moderate a session wherein there were some six to eight individuals for a particular product, a particular category and a particular objective. I was literally pushed into it by a senior well-wisher of mine who happened to be in a market research organization and he had to be saved because the clients too were there. That is how it started off. I got it and I managed doing it. See, what happens is, you know, you have the actual objectives, the way you're asking me the questions, okay? So you have the objectives. Uh, you need to talk to them and you need to figure out and then you need to just kind of, you know, call out the insights and take some time in thinking deeper and put down your notes and ultimately put down your presentation and present it, you know, by way of insights. Now, by the grace of Almighty, because I had the experience of being in the other sectors earlier as a full-timer, the moment I got into this session, I thought, wow, this is great fun. I used to be punished, Nikita, in my school because I was talkative. Incidentally, my mom was also in the school as well as the teachers, and you won't believe it. And somehow or the other, Nikita, it is a matter of pride to tell you, I used to get punished because I used to talk in the class, though I was a very good student. Somehow I thought, maybe one day, this talking would take me somewhere. And I'm proud, I'm happy, and I'm emotional to tell you that gift of the gap, talking to people, understanding them, being empathetic, being compassionate, learning, knowing so much from them, has actually made me fall in love with the profession. And then there was no looking back. There has been a lot of negativities, but there was no looking back. And I'm on my 23rd year of practice. And thanks to all my clients who had trusted me, all those colleagues who supported me and who did not support me, and my family who was always with me. How sweet. So, Ajahn Daji, that's really, truly very inspiring. I wanted to ask you, like, consider there are college, there are students, okay, there are newbies who are, who are just knowing this field. For example, my niece or, uh, you know, or friends, or even if I want to take this up as a profession or as a career option, what kind of skills do I need? Like you said, you were talkative and, you know, you had this uh, skill of understanding people. So it was very easy for you to transform into, um, you know, in consumer insight practitioner because you, you have been doing it since your childhood. You just gave a name to it when you became a, uh, you became a professional, uh, you know. But what kind of skills should i look for or should i uh, tap when i want to take this up if not as a first career option but if i want to develop it what kind of skills should i look out for okay oh well this is again a very good question thank you so much nikita brilliant uh, in fact what has happened is there are a lot of people you know in the market research agencies who are very very new who are interns and trainees and i'm proud and happy and humbled to tell you that today i have been working with them and it's amazing working with the new generation Okay, because they are open to new things, they are open to learn and they're open to give you that kind of a respect because of your knowledge and your experience. At the same time, one has to calm down and humble oneself to be at par with the new generation who are wanting to come in. So for me, I have been lucky enough because there have been many opportunities where I have given lectures as a guest lecturer. I have hand-holded a newcomer who's just an intern in a very reputed market research company and she's become a confirmed employee. He has also become a com uh, confirmed employee. So there are many such instances. Now, coming down to your skills. See, uh, qualitative market research has different phases, okay? Number one, if you're confident enough, you just talk, you do the actual interactions, try, think, get into the ultimate deliverables and then you move on you can also be an interpreter if you're good in some local language because there are many conversations i being a bombayite i speak in english bengali hindi and marathi there are a lot of conversations that happen in bengali or marathi everybody doesn't know it so when the client is there there can be a simultaneous interpreter 
who can interpret and give whatever is happening like a running commentary so that can be a job option you can even be a transcriber though the job of the transcriber will be almost gone because of ai it has almost gone and it would be gone but still there are some people who want a translator you know to literally translate maybe from hindi to english for an international client or maybe you know from bengali to english or bengali to hindi or whatever so that's the next option in fact being an interpreter would actually help the person to get to know about you know how to interact because interaction is not just talking it's talking it's understanding it's pausing it's thinking it's multitasking it's looking at the verbals hearing the verbals and looking at the non verbals your body language your tone your facial expressions everything so that could be another option and ultimately you know you could also prepare the presentation you can you know be contemporary in learning the new ways in which you can do it faster and actually present it to the client while you're presenting to the client you need to be very very aware conscious about the research objective what has come up and you should really be ready you know to face all sort of question that comes up from the client so again going back to skills you need to have gift of the gab you need to have the ability to talk is what i mean by gift of the gab secondly you need to be very compassionate you need to be very understanding patient and you need to really be flexible because sometimes i talk to a kid who's a 5 year old he might be talking to me about cadbury's and kinder joy and lays and pepsi and sprite so you know i should be able to talk to him relate to him and get things from him at the same time i have done studies in an old age home where it was tears tears and negativities you know maybe you know the woman has been dumped by her son and her daughter in law or maybe by her daughter or maybe by her husband and she is in an old age home so you need to have that empathy you need to know when to talk in qualitative research nikita silence is very important you need to be quiet you need to know you need to have your senses you know in understanding and talking and getting things out so that is also one of the skills so you talk to a 5 year old and you talk to anybody and everybody a guy or a female or a girl or a boy i've even spoken to transgenders and got a lot of insights because today you might see transgenders everywhere and they are doing an they are playing an excellent role they are doing a great job you know especially in the beauty industry you go to the big showrooms you know you find them so that has been done then you talk to a senior citizen so again coming down to the skills it is talking it is understanding it is empathizing it is being able to interact with any age group any gender it is understanding the objective of the client and matching it up marrying it up with what you are getting and more and delivering it ultimately to the client so there are some options of you can be a translator also you can be a transcriber also and you can ultimately have the capabilities of handling the client straight and one important thing before i close this question of yours you need to be absolutely transparent absolutely ethical you need to have the guts to actually say what the reality is ajanta manage kar do na yaar are kya hoga kisi ko koi samajh mein nahi aayega no you need not compromise so i think these are the things i have learned over the years nikki that's so beautiful i am sure you had an amazing experience while doing all your projects um coming to gender i remember a conversation uh, last time that you know not many women are there uh, in market research uh, not many understand consumer insight practitioner or become practitioner why do you think that is why do you think there is a gap there Okay now Nikita I'm aware of the fact that you have taken this challenge of empowering women hats off to you I salute you for this and you're doing a brilliant job thank you so much because I have come across a lot of women I believe in mentoring I believe in uh getting coached getting mentored and I'm going to continue with this and you have been one of the best mentors one of the best coaches you know whom I have interacted with apart from your professional expertise I'm not flattering you it is a kind of woman the ethics the transparency and the sincerity which shows all over on your face we haven't met and i just want to put this on record now coming down to your question fortunately or unfortunately qualitative research nikita has a lot of women 
because it is told with no uh, vengeance towards our male gender women understand things better than men so we have a lot of women in qualitative research we have a lot of clients you know who are also women and of course we do have men so at least in qualitative research you won't be able to say that there aren't too many women but yes women take break during maternity they keep coming and going they move on the client side but i think it is one of the best job for a woman who really wants to you know work with her heart and soul another important point i would like to mention i think it has to be soulful partnering there are many people all over the globe in this profession nikita but at the end of the day it is not that you know you just have the questions and you just do a question answer and then you know you are off you need to actually put your heart and soul in the category in the brand that you are working for in the research objective of the client understanding the client confronting the client if required because the client might not know certain things the client might have some assumptions the client might think you know that the person you are talking to is the right person but ultimately you when you are talking you get your intuitions you have your gut which says that no this is not the right thing so you you should have the guts to actually cancel that and again get the right person so that at the end of the day you are responsible and you are answerable to the client you get the right inputs for the client and the client can take it forward so these are the things which are very important and for any woman i think this is a very good profession because i think you know we are referred as durga as kali as lakshmi and i don't know which are the goddesses and i think we do have you know the traits that are required to be a consumer and science professional so it's a profession for men and women i know some guys who have been excellent in this profession whether it is you know as consultants or whether it is you know from the branding side on the other side of the table super super that's so amazing i am just so um, you know excited about the idea that uh, a women can take this up as a profession usually after maternity break you know i am connected with quite a few women right so they call me and they will ask me uh, nikita please suggest me some digital marketing course even though they come from a different different background okay some might be engineer or some might be doing some some other things but the ultimate call, they call they call and they ask me is uh, nikita please tell me which digital marketing course to take up and when i ask them uh, why you want to do digital marketing it's just very convenient right so uh, i can do it at my time i will do little facebook little google and it will give me money so that's why i want to do the digital marketing course per se so i strongly feel that you know there are so many options beyond digital marketing so women should also consider a, a profession like consumer insight probably it may take them time to develop the skill but uh, this is a one of the best option they can consider they can start uh, learning or adopting new skills right so thank you so much for sharing that uh, could you also guide if anybody be it a, any student or be it any profession who wants to start how should they start what should be the first step for them to get into this field Okay, Nikita, I want to tell you something. I think Nikita, you belong to the Gujarati community. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, great. Okay, now why I'm telling you this? We had a study, you know, wherein we uh, actually spoke to Gujaratis from Gujarati communities, Marwadis from Marwadi community, Bengalis from Bengali communities, because we wanted to understand the cultural nuances. and the cultural nuances are very different i being a bombayite i mean i know a gujarati and a marathi like nobody's listeners because i've lived with them grown up with them okay now i wanted to tell you something very interesting how does qualitative research start it starts with getting the right people who do i talk to i talk to the right target group okay now for example if it's a nail polish user i need to talk to a nail polish user who uses an x brand and you know who's of this particular age and who probably you know buys it from xyz online or offline now there are lot of associations and teams and people who actually recruit them in the sense through networking you know they are brought for the event so this recruitment can be a very good idea for the students for homemakers for elderly people also wherein they can actually give references from their network to the market research agencies 
and those people can be put on a panel and they can come and attend these sessions you know if they're genuinely into the category like for example if they're genuinely using the nail polish that is supposed to be used the brand and the age group matches and all that stuff these recruitments can just be you know through networking and they could get a good amount of money out of each recruitment that they do whether they are students whether they are homemakers or whether they are housewives or whether they are mother in laws that's number one now what happens we get fresh respondents whom we talk to rather than getting the same respondents over and over again and this would be genuine people they would also love to come and talk because many times we have it online or offline at a proper venue so this is one part secondly you know they could come as translators or maybe you know transcribers and all that or maybe slowly and gradually you know they can even come into some quantitative interviews where there's a questionnaire they can actually you know kind of go to the questionnaire and ask the questions and all that and get the answers and all that stuff so these are the things that needs to be done and they could contact the market research agencies you know by actually getting into the google and contacting somebody and this is how they can actually move ahead and if they really find this interesting apart from the money that they are earning the capable people can join a market research company as a full time or, or they can get in and become you know consultants or they can be associated with the field agencies there are a lot of field agencies they are actually called field agencies you know you can actually google and get their names also then there's a market research society of india which has got the encyclopedia of these people and then they can actually slowly and gradually use their time constructively by uh, networking getting the right people and you know getting them into the research studies and ultimately you know i mean really getting a sense of satisfaction emotionally and monetarily at the end of the day that's thank you thank you so much for that answer i think uh, we have a direction now uh, my next question to you is uh, and i promise this is a concluding question <laughs> my next question to you is what is the message uh, you know which you will give to yourself uh, about the mistakes you have done uh, probably the newbies can avoid those mistakes so what are the things you would tell your younger self that you know please do this or please don't do this these are the mistakes so what are those three things you would like to share you know for anybody to get into this okay nikita i am a little happy a little sad you know that you restricted it to three but i'll try to keep it at that i'll tell you something see uh, when i was young when i got into this profession i have always uh, kind of tried compromising on a lot of things not ethically but otherwise i'll just give you a very very straight example okay now uh, costs are a very very important factor nikita all of us charge x amount of money for a particular job it's a film star also who charges an x amount of job because at the end of the day it's money which really matters so there have been times when people have come to me and said sorry boss we cannot really give you that much you know why don't you do it for x amount you know so it's a much lesser amount maybe half or one fourth of whatever i have agreed to that you know like thinking that ha chalo bhai theek hai yaar uska to kaam ho jayega na us paise se kya hota hai baad mein dekha jayega and all that those people have actually taken advantages and that amount of money which i had compromised became a norm and at the end of the day you know like they went on saying that nahi mere paas budget hai nahi mere paas budget hai nahi aapne to pehle kya tha ab kyun nahi karna hai this was sad this was bad but dekhita believe me because of the mentors and the coaches whom i really interact with you know like i got the message very straight from my mind as well i continued working with them up to a particular time because each project was you know a big learning for me the categories were amazing and then i have slowly and gradually walked away from them putting my foot down telling them that look this is what the budget is if you can afford me great if you can't please go ahead you know to the other people who can do it for you i mean no hard feelings so my message is you know like put your foot down do things which you really want to do don't try to compromise on anything because at the end of the day you know you really you really don't like it because you can't put in your very best secondly uh, my message would be uh, there will be a lot of people you know who will be uh, kind of trying to demotivate you they will demotivate you maybe you know uh, they don't have a hard feeling towards doing that or maybe they are meant you know or maybe uh, they might have come across some bad experiences which has made them do this 
Uh, so these negativities, you know, are there. They would be there. They are there in every profession. You should always remember that failures are the pillars of success. Nikita, I have failed many a times, okay? And I'm proud to say that I have failed many a times. I've been insulted many a times. But at the same time, I'm very, very happy to tell you today that those people who had insulted me or who had thrown me out of a particular project for a particular vested interest are one of my best friends today. So we have understood that, you know, you have to separate your personal life with your professional life. And my third thing that I want to say, the third most important thing that I wanted to say, please stick to soulful partnering. I keep saying this soulful partnering, S-O-U-L-F-U-L. That is what soulful means. Uh, maybe because I have crossed 50, that could be the reason I have understood this in life. See, everything has to be left and you need to go at the end of the day, right? So take that particular assignment where you feel that you can partner with a person without losing your identity, without losing your self-respect, without losing your comfort. It's not worth it. It's not worth taking a job just for the heck of doing it. Do it if you really feel soulfully inclined towards the job towards the client and towards your co-workers. And if you don't, just gracefully walk out of the assignment. That's my tip. So amazing. Thank you so much for that message. Um, so we yeah, are towards the end of our podcast. Uh, I have this one last question for you. Um, you know how actively i work for women entrepreneurs and taking them to you know uh, advancement of digital era kind of thing so this year is my question what do you think about technology and second please share a message to all the women entrepreneurs uh, sharing what you feel about technology and why they should take their business really very seriously. Okay. Now, as far as uh, technology is concerned, I think COVID-19 was a big eye opener for all of us. In fact, I have also found COVID-19 to be a blessing in disguise. I have lost many of my colleagues and relatives and all that. That goes without saying. But COVID-19 came in such a manner that overnight, you know, we had to totally change our attitude towards technology. And we had to learn a lot of things. I had to learn a lot of things and I didn't know how, but I did it. Because jobs started coming and everything was online. So technology is something a woman has to really equip oneself with. Whether it is market research or whether it is just a job or whether it is just being a homemaker or whatever. So it's always good to know about technology, update about the coming technologies. And as far as market research is concerned, we've got AI and we've got, we had chat GPT and there are so many, many, many other things coming up. And I have been attending a lot of webinars, local, national and international. And I have been getting a lot of invites from LinkedIn, wherein people have been telling us, you know, about the way technology would really, you know, uh, convert the entire uh, industry, not just market research, but the you know entire corporate world. So my advice would be, uh, see, I wasn't a very uh, tech savvy person in the sense my husband has been quite a bit tech savvy and he had been gifting me a lot of technical gadgets, you know, instead of the perfumes and the color cosmetics that I wanted and I hated it. But today I'm proud of that because I think I have always been learning and I have been enhancing myself and that has really helped me, you know. So at the end of the day, I would tell every woman, irrespective of the age, to be tech savvy, to be contemporary, you know, to keep on learning, irrespective of the age. And yes, age is just a number. Because when I meet my counterparts internationally, I find them in their 60s, 70s and 80s. Even in India, we've got some of the qualitative researchers, the veterans in the industry who are in their 70s. So that's very, very important. And if you're technically savvy, you will be able to take anything without any glitches. And of course, another advice 
may be the last one nikita one has to look after oneself undoubtedly because at the end of the day if you're not feeling well if you're not looking good and if you're not able to communicate things well you won't be able to satisfy yourself you know in whatever you do you might be rich you might have a lot of money but at the end of the day i think it is your satisfaction which matters i might sound like a old school individual but i'm proud the way i am honestly nikita not at all not at all ajanta ma'am thank you so much for doing this podcast and to all the listeners she is super active on linkedin feel free to reach out to her for any help any questions anything i will drop her linkedin profile link so she will be you know you can get in touch with her directly thank you so much and thank you ajanta ma'am for doing this thank you nikita wishing you all the very best and i know what your goal is and i'm very very confident in fact more than confident nikita with your sincerity with your warmth and with your tenacity i'm sure you will achieve whatever you wanted and you're going to achieve it very soon my best wishes to you today and every day thank you